Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Inside Pacer Nation. I'm Marcus Johnson, joined as always by Jordan Phillips. Thank you for being with us today. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting show for you guys. Me and Mark is going to break down the, rather, well, the conclusion of fall sports. Things are getting all wrapped up around here, but we're going to also have a nice preview for some of the winter sports and some of the spring sports as well. And also we're going to have a little interview with Pacers softball standout, Kristen Cricket Lowry. And Jordan will be providing the interview. And that's what we're going to lead off with today is the interview. So in just a moment, we'll get Kristen in here and uh, let you kick off that interview. It's going to be a really exciting segment. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of softball, so couldn't be more excited to have this interview. As Cricket struggles mightily to get the headset on her head. We good? Yeah. I don't think um, Marcus Shane just went out, but it's all good. It's all good. So, hello, Kristen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So, you guys just finished up the, you know, the fall season, I guess you would call it. Tell us a little bit about that and, you know, what the outlook for the team is this season. Well, we had a really good start this fall. Um, we got a few new players, and we got the, um, the opportunity to get to know them better. And we worked super hard in the beginning and practiced really hard. And, honestly, we did – what I would think is better than the start of last fall. We worked very hard over um, the beginning of fall. Then we had our weekend of um, our fall tournaments and our um, scrimmage against Sockahatchee, and it was just really good. <clears throat> um, Coach has a lot of – he has a lot of different um, players that can play different sports, and I think we're going to have a lot of opportunities to win a good amount of games this year and go very far. Okay. And you as a player, I mean, you coming into a new season, got to get a new start to things. Like, what are what are you looking to improve about your game personally going into this season? Personally, I'm looking to um, do better defensively. Um, I had a rough time last season with throwdowns, and I'm looking to better myself there. And so far, so good. We've been working really hard on that, and I've had a lot of improvements personally. Um, I'm looking to be more productive um, offensively also. I uh, had a lot of situations last year where, not a lot, but a few where I could have scored some runs for our team, and unfortunately I didn't. Um, so I'm looking to just better myself in those aspects and to play more for my team and sacrifice myself for others on my team. So For sure. That's awesome. And, you know, you're officially an upperclassman now. You're a junior. So are you seeing yourself kind of come into more of a leadership role on the team? I am. I'm seeing myself come into more of a leadership role. Um, being a transfer, I wasn't here like my freshman year, so it, it kind of have to, you know, I just feel like I have to earn my place just like everybody else does. And um, I don't see myself as one of the like big leaders like that I think of as like Chandler, Brielle, Lindy. You know, there are seniors, they're the ones who are on the field, but I think of myself as more as the tweak little things on the sideline leader. Um, just talk to somebody, make sure that they can – you know, they understand, like, the little things that they may be doing wrong and just overall be positive for my team. So that way I'm, I like to – I'm trying to lead by, more by example than verbally. Absolutely. And, I mean, that's just as important as someone who can show you exactly what you do. It's important to have that player you can kind of model yourself after. Right. So of the, uh, of the young crop of talent we got coming in, there's a lot of freshmen, a lot of young players. Who are some of the players that you think the, uh, the Pacer fans should get excited about seeing this season? Well, I definitely think one that they should be excited about is Jessica Stanley. She's um she plays third base, and I tell you, she has a, a vacuum for a glove over there. I'm pretty pumped to see her in action. Um, she did really well uh, our fall tournament and our you know, scrimmage against Sokachi. Um She bats left-handed, but she throws right-handed, so that's a good, very versatile, and she's just doing really well. She has a good pop on her bat, um, and I think she'll go very far. So, um, I also know that Deja Robinson, she's, um, she plays shortstop, middle infield. She can also play outfield. She has quick feet. Um, I think with a few minor tweaks just to get her out of the whole high school softball kind of thing. Um, after that, she should be, she should be stellar out there right now. We have her at shortstop and she has a really good glove. Also, she's very quick and, um, she has quick hands at the bat. Um, she's, she's sneaky batting. So that's always good speed on the bases. It's positive. Um, we have Macy, who we um, she can play the infield and the outfield, and I've seen her go from the infield straight to the outfield and then make a stellar outfield play. 
She also has a really good bat. She has a lot of pop. So um, we also have Kaylin Powell, who's another freshman. She's an outfielder, and she is tracking the ball so well in the outfield right now. It's She's very dependable, which is good. We always need a dependable um, a dependable player. Everybody needs that. And then um, she's just making such good contact at the plate. Very few strikeouts right now. So we're hoping that leads into the spring. All of our freshmen are doing really well. Yeah. And so based on what you're saying, the uh, the upperclassmen should uh, watch their backs. They're going to have to play really hard to keep their positions. And they have. That's another thing that I've noticed over the fall is that we've had um, we've had some, all these new people come in, and they've given us some competition in our positions where we think, oh, we're an upperclassman. That's not the case. Um, they are definitely competing right there along with us. And I've noticed that it's making the players who've already been here, you know, these returners, boost their game up and they're like oh I need to step my game up these people are actually good and we're gonna have to battle for this position and it's just it's been really good and I don't say when I say battle it's not a bad thing it we are competing against each other we are battling against each other but we're also bringing the best out of each other so it's a just it's one of, it's a really good thing that we have going on right now yeah that's awesome and so one final question just what what are your I guess expectations for the season, or rather, what do you expect to get out of the season as a team? What what do you what is your goal to accomplish for this season? Um, well, my goal, number one goal, is just I would like to take it game by game. Um, I know that everybody has big hopes for making it to the the conference tournament, regionals, you know, winning a national championship. But you cannot get there unless you win each game. So that's kind of where I am. Um, that's where I'm standing right now is I really I want to have our small goals completed and achieved before we can reach our big ones which is what has to happen so when people ask me I'm just kind of like I just want to win the the first game we have first game of the season that's what I want to win that's my goal right now and then after that game I want I want to win the next series and then just take it game by game so it's not as overwhelming absolutely sounds like you have an awesome outlook for the season yeah, I'm all trying. Right. All right, so thank you so much. We appreciate it. Kristen Lauer, everyone. Be sure to check her out when uh, softball gets started. She's the one behind the plate making all those <laughs> excellent stops, throwing out runners at second. It's going to be great. Thank you. And so while the headsets get transferred over, we'll be talking about, you know, as we mentioned, the closing out of the fall semester. We're going to talk about some cross-country, women's and men's soccer, golf, basketball, as we always do. And, of course, we'll close out with volleyball, as we always do. We are a very traditional group of people here. We stick to a plan. We make a plan. We stick to it. It's going to be a great show. And hopefully it will be a great show. We can only provide so much, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes we have to bring in those, those uh, outside personalities like Cricket Lowry to balance out the monotony, you know. You and I were only so entertaining for so long. Uh, that is that is for sure. Even I fall asleep to my own voice at times. <laughs> Don't we all? I fall asleep to my own Christmas album, actually. You have a Christmas album? Available in stores everywhere. Uh, we're going we're gonna to steer away from that before this gets too out of control. <laughs> and, Shameless uh, self-promotion. Move on into cross-country, which you said we were uh, going to lead, uh, lead off with. And... Um, Bethany Fordham, one of the big things uh, coming out of that is she's going to be competing at the NCAA Southeast Regional. On the last show, we talked that a couple of our runners had a shot at it, and Fordham came through. Yeah, she absolutely did. And, I mean, as we, we mentioned it a lot last the last show, you know, it's, it's huge for a player from the school to be able to go to regionals. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's one of those things, it's a long shot, but just to have a player go – to a regional tournament, especially one that is an individ- on an individual basis like cross country, is huge for the program because in the future other players will look at our, or other other runners, I guess you would say players. I don't think you would say it that way. Other runners will look at our program and say, "Oh, they're sending players runners to regional tournaments." You know, I have a chance to make a regional if I'm running with this team. You know, that's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for recruitment. It's a good thing for just the team in general. The pl- the other runners look at Bethany and they see that they have a shot to you know, perform well and reach postseason play with this team, it's it's good. It's good for the team as a whole. And not only having a shot at regionals, but when you get to the regionals, that gives you a shot at nationals. And I mean, if you can make that, that's a one heck of a feather you can put in your cap. National championship, that's, that's, that's a bit farther down the road, but you never know. Anything could happen. Yeah, and, you know, as we were talking about the PBC championship, you know, the team struggled a little bit there, but they were able to finish inside the top ten. 
So it wasn't the best performance for the team as a whole, but it, it brought out, you know, it brings things that are hopeful for next season. It brings good things for next season. You've got Mimi Inman returning. She'll be a sophomore next season. Bethany Fordham will be back as a senior if all goes as it should. You know, the team has – a lot to look forward to next season. It can only go up from here. That is true. And they did go up from last year. They, they slightly improved. And even a slight improvement is better than no improvement at all. Or, in worst case scenario, backtracking. Absolutely. You'd rather you'd rather move forward a little bit than remain stagnant. That's never a good thing. And so, cross country trying to move on forward. Bethany Fordham, a key component in that move forward as she will compete at the NCAA Southeast Regionals. And that moves us into another sport that's entering its postseason, women's soccer. Regular season was a bit tough for the uh, for the women's soccer team. They would show flashes of really great play, and uh, it was good enough that they earned a spot in the postseason. They made it into the Peach Belt tournament, uh, but uh, as uh, we just found out not too long ago, the uh, that did not uh, end well for them as they suffered a, a defeat. Yeah, and as you mentioned, it was a tough season for the for the women's soccer team. But one thing you know, you'll notice if you look at their results, eight of their matches were decided by one goal or less. Well, not less, but eight of their matches were decided by one goal. So, I mean, the team had so many opportunities to win games, and, and they just un, just circumstances didn't go their way. They just they would be out of position here, or just weren't able to get back on the side of the ball. And on this game, you know, so many so many opportunities to win. You know that just they weren't just quite weren't able to capitalize on. So I mean, it was a rough season as you mentioned, but they were able to make the tournament. Something I don't believe they were able to do last year, and so you, they're building on their 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 building. It's basically it's a rebuild team. There's got they've got a lot of seniors graduating, but they also have a lot of young talent as well. The team can only go up from here, and, and, and eventually going up from here will lead to success. And the freshmen made quite an impact on the year, coming up big in certain uh, in certain ways. I believe Ms. Marissa Lee was one of the uh, one of the key players this year. She made some great plays throughout the season, and uh, the seniors really, I think, helped them grow girl as the season went on they they took a good leadership position out there um i know for a fact um cat Walliter, the keeper goalkeeper did a you know she she had a lot of goals that were let up at times but she also faced a lot of shots so you can't really fault her too much for for some of the the big goal games but um she she also made some fantastic saves um in in the keep this year and i remember i actually ran into her uh, outside of school one time, and I didn't even I didn't know it was her, and without realizing it, I was complimenting her on her style of play. So, I mean, that, it just shows the the kind of impact it made on me, who who really never followed soccer until I came to USC Aiken. She made that much of an impact on me, where I was able to to boast about her style of play without even realizing it was her. Yeah, I got to agree with you. You know, I never was a big soccer fan until I started working here in the athletic department. But you know, the the team had a lot of impact players. Uh, that were young, and I mean, you look at the Olsen twins who were big for the team all season long. Marissa Lee, as you mentioned, she had three goals on the season and was one of the team leaders in that category. She also had seven points on the season, so she was an excellent, excellent uh, piece of the team and a good find for Coach Hillary George. And you also had players like Katie Cummins in the goal, a uh, potential replacement for Karin Cadwalder. You know, Cadwalder hard to replace, but. Katie Cummins could be a good place to start. She showed flashes of brilliance this season, and she can only go up from here as we continue to say over and over again. But losing a lot of those senior players is going to be tough to do. How can you replace Kat Michaela scoring six goals on the season with 14 points? You know, she had two assists on the season. And also, you look at losing a player like Sarah Moore, who may not necessarily score the most goals, but she's one of those players. She's a spark plug. You know, she comes onto the field, she plays with energy, and she elevates the other players around her. Replacing that kind of player is going to be difficult for Hillary George. But if she can manage to do that, they have a lot of young talent on the team. I would argue they have more talent that is that are freshmen than they've ever had. I mean, they have a lot of promising players on that team with the Olsen twins and Marissa Lee and uh, even even a player like Katie Cummins, as we mentioned. You know, there, there's a lot of opportunities for improvement with a team like this. I and mean, we're replacing the, you know, as we mentioned, the Sarah Moores, the Tori Caldwells, the Marissa, Marissa Lees of the, of the world are going to be – it's going to be tough, but it is doable. And if they can do it, 
I think they can have a really nice season next season. Yeah, next season, I don't expect them to backtrack at all. I think they'll they'll at worst stay right where they're at, which would mean a postseason berth at the at uh, at the worst. So yeah, that's that's a good sign if, if our predictions do come true. But you know, take our predictions with a grain of salt if you want. <laughs> it all depends on how the season goes yeah. next year. And e- even a season with a lot of losses like this one, if you are able to get in the postseason, that's a successful season. And one of the things I do want to point out is in a lot of games this year. Going into the half, the team has been either tied or in the lead going into halftime, and it's the second half where a lot of those losses came in, and that you can attribute that to stamina. And I feel like if during the offseason Coach Hillary George works with them on trying to increase their stamina, I mean, I know they're probably going to hate me for saying this, but gives them a bit more running to do, <laughs> um, increase their stamina, uh, a line that I always love from a, from a great movie was the legs feed the wolf, and that, that is true in the, in this case. Absolutely. If they if they increase their stamina, you're going to see a lot of those halftime leads and halftime ties continue on in the second half and eventually turn into wins. So you can take if uh, I know it wasn't uh, if they they finish under 500 this year. They, they could probably finish at 500 or even above 500 if they work on that stamina and they come through in the later minutes of a match. Absolutely. And so, you know, to the women of the soccer team, when those extra suicides do start happening next season and during conditioning, you can blame Marcus Johnson. That's M-A-R-C-U-S-J-A-J-O-H-N-S-O-N for those uh, extra suicides. That's his fault, not mine. I had nothing to do with it. Yeah, that. but if it results in a championship, uh, then uh, definitely give me a call. And I'll be, uh, I'll be happy to take your praise. <laughs> happy to take credit for that, yeah. <laughs> but that'll about wrap it up for soccer. The season comes to an early end in the Peach Belt Tournament quarterfinal, but a bright future ahead for them uh, moving on. And a season that ends in a tournament berth since their first one since 2014. So... Lots to look forward to next year, and a bright, a bright spot on a uh, on a season that you know could eventually be better. But that moves us on to men's soccer, who also earned a berth in the postseason tournament for the second straight year. They made it in there as the number six seed, and um, that uh, that had a lot of impact. A lot of the the seniors did a great job there for uh, for the men's team this year. Driss Barraquette and uh, and. Um, Andre Simmons did a did a great job on the year. Really made an impact on the on the field. And Andre Simmons, of course, as we mentioned earlier, the early part of the season, uh, set the school record for career assists. Yeah, absolutely. He had a massive season, as did Barrett, as you mentioned. And uh, in, impressive play from players that you know we didn't necessarily expect to have big years. Players like Roberto or Roberto Biondicho and Rich, Aaron Richard. You know, they had really nice seasons. Richard, of course, coming in in the latter half of the season. And when he uh, finally did show up, he certainly made an impact on the on the field. So the Pacers have a lot to look forward to in Aaron Richard. And it's going to hurt losing these seniors. Uh, as we said before, these seniors are the team that took the Pacers to the uh, to the NCAA tournament um, back in, I believe it was 2014. And... Um, Losing that experience is, is going to be a hefty blow for uh, Coach Afoji, but uh, if they could pass on their knowledge and uh, some of their tricks to the freshmen and to the underclassmen, uh, you never know. They could make another run at it. Again, they made the tournament this year. Uh, it's two years in a row. Not a bad, uh, not a bad outcome. Uh, moving on through the tournament, however, seems to seems to be a tougher thing for them to do. But I mean, you gotta you gotta start somewhere. Well, it always is a tough thing. I mean, you're playing the absolute best in your conference when you make the conference tournament. You're not playing any team that are slouches, and so you've you've really got to you know come and you've got to bring your best game to the tournament. And sometimes even your best isn't quite good enough. You know, these are tough teams as we mentioned. And so, but as these freshmen grow older, as they mature, there's a lot of talent on the team next season. They're bringing in a lot of guys next year that are going to be returning. It's going to be another big season for them, and I think they can improve on the work that they've laid down this year. I think players like uh, Thomas Kretschmar, the defender, the freshman defender, he was fantastic this season. He he had a huge impact on the year. I don't know how many great defensive plays he made. He blocked a lot of shots. You know, coming from a guy like me who loves the sport of hockey, I can appreciate a good block shot. I mean, you can too. You Absolutely. love hockey as well. But he, <laughs> he looked. Fans. He, he he looked like a good NHL defender out there, 
making those great blocks on some shots. He didn't care what happened to his body. He's like, I'm going to stop this ball from getting anywhere near the keep. And he, he – he really stood tall out there. Yeah, and so I mean, other freshmen players like Aaron Richard, and even on the on the you know goalkeeping side of things, Leonardo Tarja, he was fantastic in goal this season as well. We can't can't count the number of times we saw him get the nod in favor of Chase Bolton, who struggled you know with some injuries this season. Tarja had a big season, really impressive out there. I can imagine that he'd be the starting keeper next season, unless you know something happens, but I doubt it. You know, I can expect to see him in the goal next year, and he's uh, he was impressive in his role that in that role this season. And so the Pacers men's soccer doing very well as of late. Not as well as uh, we would hope, but well enough to earn a postseason berth and uh, give us some hope for the future, honestly. I feel, like, I feel like next year, as we as we move on to the prediction phase of our coverage, I feel like next year they will improve. I feel like they will be better. Um, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb here. I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're going to make it to the semifinals, at least, of the tournament. You know, I love it when you go out on a limb. And also... Another big thing is going to be the return of Jordan Masiri, you know, yeah. a guy who was a, he's been absolutely dynamite in his time at USC Aiken. So having him come back is going to be huge for the Pacers. You know, he's an offensive phenom out there on the pitch. And that's a major factor on why I'm saying they could do better. He's going to have a year another year under his belt. That's going to he's going to have the experience of NCAA play and obviously the tournament play. So why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Because Jordan Masiri didn't play this season. I'm going crazy then. <laughs> uh, he was redshirted, actually, at okay, the start well, of the season. Well, I mean, he'll at least have... <laughs> it, shows, it shows what I know. I'm getting groans all you're around get, the room. You're getting old. I am getting old. And, I mean, it happens. When you cover so many sports, they all start running together. Yeah, we, it, we got a lot to cover. We got a lot of names to remember, a lot of faces to remember, a lot of stats to remember. Our heads start hurting, you know? But I think I'm, tar- I'm going gray, actually, so, you know, yeah, this is, it's, a, a, it's a stressful job. I see a couple of gray roots there. <laughs> I'm on my Steve Martin, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, Steve Martin was successful, at least. The Silver Fox. Yeah, there you go. But that, that will conclude <laughs> men's soccer. We're, we're looking at it, may, possibly making a uh, deeper run into the postseason next year, if they don't do that this year. And uh, that will move us on into one of everybody's favorite, golf. Uh, as we say every single show, I know you're tired of hearing it, but they are always national contenders. And uh, one of the big reasons for them being national contenders is August Linval. Yeah, absolutely. Linval has been absolutely huge for the golf team this season. He's got two top performances, and he's only played – or two top ten performances, and he only played in two tournaments. So he's batting a 1,000 for having top ten performances in tournament play, which is something that the Pacers can be very excited about going on into the spring. And those top ten performances help them with their national rankings. Currently they're at number 21 in the nation. They dropped down from number nine. But the rankings do not include their last tournament in which they did a phenomenal job against a bunch of very difficult D1 opponents. Yeah, they absolutely did. They uh, they did really well in that tournament, and uh, they finished third in that tournament on uh, day two, and in day one, they finished fifth. So not bad at all either day at the Camden Collegiate in Camden, South Carolina. That was an excellent performance for them. As you mentioned, featured a lot of top teams in the nation, D1 opponents. So once those uh, once that finish gets factored into things, I think you can see expect to see the golf team rise up back into those rankings. Maybe not as high as number nine, but they'll definitely rise some more. And that's the thing. They're a D2 school going up against D1 opponents, and they're doing so well that you know when they go on into tournament play, postseason play, at the end of the spring, it may almost seem like child's play to them. And, uh, and for, for the entire university's sake, I hope they do see it as child's play and they just go and cruise on through for a national championship for their fourth national championship in school history. You never know. It could happen. Oh, yeah, and I'm sure that uh, you or I would both enjoy being able to say that we worked with a national title contender here in our time at USC Aiken. Yeah, I'd certainly like that. We have uh, And a national title winner, rather. Yeah, what we have right now, we have um, two conference championships, one with volleyball, one with golf from yep. last year, and, and we, a regional championship. Yes, we do. Um, so uh, it would be really nice to, to put a little national championship picture on the wall uh, in my office. In your office. Oh, I know, in my, uh, in my other job. Oh, that's right. You do have an office. I, I do I have don't. an office. You don't. <laughs> I'll put it on my bedroom wall. you put it over the grill. Yeah. Over the grill. <laughs> Yes, I'll put it over the grill. Yeah, I guess splatter with a little steak sauce, but you never know. Not the steak it be, sauce. It'll be fine. Not the steak <laughs> sauce. That's valuable. We can't afford to lose a single drop. That, that is true. Steak <laughs> sauce is very valuable. But uh, before we go into more nonsense, you know, golf, 
they, they're going to be on a break for a while now. Their next tournament isn't going to be until 2018. But uh, you can be sure they're going to be practicing. I mean, golf can be played all year long here in the South, which is why not only USC Aiken, but the entire Southeast region always produces top-notch golfers. Absolutely. And now we're going to move on into one of our favorites. We can't say it is our favorite. That's just being unfair. But they do so well here. Volleyball. Volleyball. Let's let's oh, just, let's just look at volleyball. What do we got? We got. Gotta love it. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, give you some updates. Pacers just coming off of a win against Francis Marion. Their final home match of the season. Always good to end it on a high note. Three zero victory there. Yep, and uh, that, that coming off their first loss at home, unfortunately, we'll have to talk about that as well against Flagler. But that is Flagler, you know. That's the that's always the two top teams in the in the conference battling it out for that PBC title. So the Pacers unfortunately dropped that one to Flagler, but as you mentioned, picked it right back up against Francis Marion. Yeah, that match against Flagler, a heartbreaking loss, which broke a 21-game winning streak for the Pacers and a 31-match home winning streak for USC Aiken. Um, and there's the 21-match win streak was actually a um, a school record. In fact, both are best for any sport at any time in Division II history for the university. And uh, while that hurts, you can only look forward. You're still right up there for the top spot in the conference. You're tied with Flagler right now record-wise uh, for conference record with one loss each. Uh, but those losses are to each other. We went down to Flagler early in the season and beat them there three sets to one. They came up here and beat us three sets to one. So, you know, just a little, little mix and match it going on there. But uh, if the Pacers can win out the rest of the season and – uh, they only have, I believe, three more matches uh, going into the weekend. Uh, they're all on the road, but if they can go in there and win all of those without dropping a set, that really puts them into the driver's seat for possibly hosting the regional tournament this year. They can't, they won't be hosting the conference tournament. That's already been set. Uh, but again, you, you and I don't really care too much about the conference tournament. We want that regional. We want to go to nationals. Well, you know, of course, we do care. About yeah, it. we do. We can't but... say we don't care about it. We care about it for sure. But the the regional tournament, hosting the regional tournament, I mean, you can't really describe just how much of an impact that's going to have positively on the Pacers' experience in the regional tournament. I mean, I mean, you think about it, you're, it's either playing somewhere where you're not familiar with playing, you know, it's a different gym. I mean, certain gyms are smaller than others. It's a very cramped environment. It's a very claustrophobic environment even. And, you know, you've got a, a place, a cavernous arena like the Computation and, Center. And also the outside atmosphere. Uh, if you're on the road, you're ending up staying in a hotel instead of going home to your own bed or uh, wherever, or your own dorm if, you, if you're on campus. Uh, those that plays a factor in the psyche of an athlete. And, I mean, if you can get through it, more power to you. But uh, if you have the opportunity to stay at home and go back to your familiar surroundings, I say take it. And uh, that's what the Pacers are striving for. Absolutely. I mean, that, that it's, a, it's, a, it's a very psychological thing. So having having to host the regionals is a huge boost. I mean, it's not a, it's not a you know, it's not a certain loss if you don't host it, but hosting is definitely a big, big plus. And if the Pacers do end up hosting, you can thank just all-around fantastic op op uh, performances from everybody on the team, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, and seniors. Uh, let's look at the freshmen before we go on, and we'll start it off with Allie Smith, who at this point is almost a shoe in for freshman of the year. She's just done a fantastic job playing for the Pacers. And even if she doesn't get freshman of the year, I say we make a, a Johnson Phillips Memorial freshman of the year <laughs> Gatorade bottle yet for a, her. Yet another bottle wrapped in tin foil for Allie Smith. It's a prestigious award, it truly is, but I'm sure the PBC freshman of the year is something she'd rather have. I mean, she's got some tough competition from Hannah Ritz down in Lander. You know, I mean, she's an excellent offensive player in her own right. But, yeah, as you mentioned, Allie Smith, I mean, she's just a fantastic player on both sides of the ball, defensive, offensive. I mean, she just does everything well. She serves well. She She's just one of those players, a special player. She's just all around. She just does it all. She's great defensively. I mean, she makes great digs on the uh, on the court. Great attack. She battles with senior Julia Forrester, who earlier this year made uh, just hit the uh, thousand kill mark and is in the top 10 in kills for the university all time. Yep. And she's battling with her for the top spot this season. She just does such a fantastic job. But that, but we can't let her overshadow some of the other freshmen on the year. Uh, Kayla Duggan, who's really stepped up recently and seen a lot of action out there on the court, she does a fantastic job. Uh, Bryn Bonner, who has one of the best serves that I have ever seen watching volleyball. That's That thing has such great movement and such power. That it's. I mean, I'm surprised she doesn't have more service aces on the year. Yeah, well, it's it's one of those things. She's just 
when speaking about Duggan, one of the most impressive things about her is her defensive ability. You know, she's she's still figuring out her shot here at the collegiate level, but her defense is on point. I mean, she just comes in. She came in that one game off the bench. I can't remember exactly what game it was in, but she comes in. It was her first. It was the first match I believe she played in, and she ended up coming in and getting 18 digs, and that was a pretty important. That was a pretty impressive uh, performance for her. And as time goes on, she's only gotten better on the defensive side of things. And her offense, it does need work, of course. But as a freshman, you have time to work on that. And then Bonner, as you mentioned, her serve is absolutely incredible. And that's what's been getting her. And that was the that match was Tusculum. Yeah, it, was a, it was a key match, too. That one went to five sets, basically down two to one. But, yeah, when you have a freshman – making fantastic plays against a tough opponent like that with uh, the regional implications on the line. I mean, what more can you ask for if you're head coach Glenn Cox? And looking at another freshman who's really stepped up is uh, Natalie Peralt, who when Rebecca Martinez was out with, uh, with a sore ankle, she stepped up and put on the libero jersey, and it was almost like uh, Rebecca Martinez hadn't left the court. It was just great, great quality play from a freshman. Yeah, and one thing that you get from Peralt that you may not necessarily get from Rebecca Martinez is the ability to hit. Peralt is actually an, an offensive player as well, despite being so fantastic defensively. You know, that's something that, and not to you know fault Martinez at all, but that's just something that she's not very proficient with. You almost never see her go up for an attack, whereas Peralt. I mean, we've seen her do that a lot this season. Yeah, she'll go out. She'll go out on the outside and make great attacks. And uh, it's because she can play the outside position as well as that, you know, inside that yeah, defensive she's position. She's built like a libero, but she can play the other positions if she has to. Uh, she's another all-around good player and uh, a bright spot for for USC Aiken this year. Uh, and now moving on into the seniors who have seen great success at the uh, university, obviously with now two conference championships and a regional championship. They're able, I mean, we're yes, they'll be leaving now. Uh, Lauren Howard, uh, Julia Forrester, Alicia Hines, and uh, Emily Tilon. Yeah, I mean, those are going to be some hefty losses for the Pacers, but they'll be able to pass on their, their knowledge to the underclassmen, and the underclassmen are in a position right now where they might be able to do the exact same thing as the seniors of this year and go on to win a regional championship. And that is true. I mean, this talent, this team is talented all the way up and down the lineup. Freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors all are just fantastic. It's a great team, and it, it, they have the chance to do something special. Yeah, I mean, last year's team was great. This year's team could be even better. Next year's team could be the best. And... Uh, you know, another factor for why they could be the best was Rebecca Martinez, as we were talking about earlier, the current libero, who's closing in on a thousand digs. And uh, if she does get it, she will be the fifth active sophomore nationally to do so, and only the second in USC Aiken school history to reach the mark. And you know, yeah, Martinez. I mean, she's just she's been playing fantastic. And you know, it wouldn't surprise me if she takes a shot at uh, Danielle Mercer's all-time digs record here in a single season. Yeah, the single season record that Mercer set last year could be taken out, and I wouldn't be surprised if Martinez ends up taking the the career record in digs. She's just that good. She's already set records in uh, single matches, three sets, four set matches, uh, for di- for digs, and um, also setting career career records for herself in those matches as well. Um, I can only see her doing even better. And honestly, if she doesn't break the school digs record for all time. Uh, I might, I'd be shocked. I'd yeah, honestly I got to agree with you. But, you know, I was just passed a note, actually, about the seniors, uh, the senior class. In 2017 so far, they're 16-1 and one at home. Last year, 16-0. and 0. 2015, they were 20-3 and three at home. 2014, they were 13-4, and four, making them 65-8 and eight here at the Convocation Center all-time, the senior class. I mean, that is that's, fantastic. That's Not many teams can boast something even close to that. I mean, they, they have 101 wins in total so far. I mean, that is fantastic. And, you know, I mean, credit that to just good quality play all around again. And, uh, you know, you got to give the coach a little bit of credit there for picking these for picking these players out of their high schools and uh, persuading them to come to little old USC Aiken. But when you have a chance to win a ring, uh, that's a good uh, – that's a good uh, – Persuader, I guess. Yeah, you'd it's say. definitely a good talking point for uh, all of Coach Cox's future meetings with recruits. I mean, this is a national contender, and as long as he continues to bring in talent like he has been, it has a chance to be that way for a long time. So let's move on ahead and look at the future right now. As we said, the, the season is wrapping up with three away matches. The final match, which is going to be in Augusta, that'll be a tough one. Augusta seems to be a thorn in everybody's side. I've watched them play all season long, and I know they've got talent. 
down there across the river. And uh, if the Pacers want to get to that number one regional ranking, they got to get through Augusta, and that'll that'll be the real. I think that could be the the match that decides things. Yeah, it absolutely could, and it'll be a tough match. And also having a match against Lander on the road and Georgia College, both teams that are pesky. You know, they 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 may not be the most successful teams, but they are a thorn in USCA's side, and they will be tough.